the Six Nations is over and England have lost in France. But man, oh man, what a wild game that was. There's Elko. We're going to talk about it. Hey, TT. Good to see you. Uh, what happened there? I'm, I've lost track so many times. A banger of a game. Um, and I think England just probably ran out a bit of time, probably. Yeah, it was an incredible game. It had ebbs and flows. It looked at times that France were just going to batter England out of sight. And then at times it looked like England might run France off the park. I mean, let's go through it. Let's start at the beginning. France, huge atmosphere in that stadium, huge atmosphere in that pack of forwards. And man, they came at a rate of knots in those first uh, opening minutes. Yeah, it, it was epic. It was kind of what we thought might happen. Um, I, I think the French wanted to ram it down the roast beef's throat and, and, and sort of, you know, put their man on it sort of thing. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was, I mean, they're huge. And But England kept in it. Um, th- th- uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of times I was watching, I was like, oh, a white shirt would get bounced. But, straight away there'd be a chop or something would happen and you know England England complete you know team performance in in that aspect. Yeah, the tackling, it has to be said, under incredible pressure, was insanely good for the most part. There was some great it was the people we talked about in the pregame, the real top tacklers, Underhill, Martin, oh. and Ben Ben Earl actually tackled really well today as well. I yeah. Think. yeah, I mean those I mean Mar- Martin is just He's gonna be a worldie. Like he's just, and he's so unassuming. He's just like doesn't he doesn't care about anything else. He's just in the moment. Um, he he is gonna be, you know, without doubt. I think a, a world player, world player of the year, maybe at some stage in the next five years. And yeah, Earls and 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 Underhill in the back row were exceptional again and um, covered really well. Yeah, another England player that I want to pick out early doors here actually is George Ford because I thought. He took the steam out of the game quite often early on. You know, he'll take a mark and then, you know, wait for all the players to come back yeah. behind him. Oh, there's an injury. All this kind of stuff. Real, like, experience. Just trying to take the heat out of those opening moments and just slow France down, which he did successfully. Unfortunately, during that period, that was when Furbank also got injured, uh, pulling a calf, I think, which... You know, could have derailed England a little bit, but thankfully, Marcus Smith has all that experience from the World Cup to fall back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting when it, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Fordy's fa- was fantastic again tonight, and um, I think the doubters need to be careful. I think you know, um, he seems to be someone who can pull together a performance and pull together forwards and backs and pull together tactics and what's happening in real time. Uh, he's an exceptional rugby minded player. Um, and yeah, they're really unfortunate to lose Furbank. He, one, one of my favourite guys at the moment um, for look like at yeah a calf pull or something, or maybe hopefully it's something not as serious um, as an Achilles or something. But yeah, you're right. You know, it was it was quite cool actually. We all knew it was going to happen with Marcus coming on at 15. We see, we've seen it at, at in the World Cup, and actually a lot of people have been calling for it. And, and you know what? They look even look really dangerous having him on the pitch and 40. Um, and maybe that's something. That they can go to, I don't know. Um, Forty's not like having terrible games or anything, or, or not kick finding touch or kicking his goals. So why not bring Smith in? And 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 Smith can be just as devastating as a second receiver, or, uh, if you know what I mean, on a, on the left or right. If Ford is on the left or whatever, and vice versa, he he can create lots of problems. He he was really good at full back, I think. Yeah, he was. But that was later in the game. This was still a massive dom- period of dominance for France. And mm. they were looking like they were strong, obviously, through the forwards. Lots of driving play, lots of mauls. They clearly wanted to try and tire England out. But they were also looking really wild and dangerous on, like, transition. Peno, in particular, I thought had a, a proper worldie of a game tonight. Yeah, he he, <laughs> he was definitely wanting to impress in front of that French crowd and was getting angry. And, and, and yeah, he was looking for ball. Um he is such a good player. Um, he he probably didn't get enough ball as he w- he would like, but he he went searching and um, looked dangerous th- throughout throughout the game. You know, he's he's a he's a. I'd have him on my fifteen every day of the week. Yeah, yeah, and f- but weirdly, it was um, it was France actually got their opening try off of an England lineout. So 
this would come back to Halton England later in the second half as well to lose your own line out. And I think it was it was in France's half. A few quick passes, and I just thought England really pressed hard, but then just put the brakes on just when it got to the crucial moment. We've seen Slade go really hard every time. And I thought he just pulled off right at the crucial moment, which allowed France to get to the outside with amazing hands. Leo Barry took took the hole and, and gassed it. And that left hand offload back inside because he had to wait like two or three seconds and pumped it a couple of times before the perfect opportunity was there for Le Garrick to get in under the sticks and score. It was a heck of a try. Yeah, it, it, well, it very well taken. I mean, he's a, he's a class player to to have that delay and and be able to do that. I, I think I suppose. Look, we we said this a few times that England are in transition. I hate that thing, but anyway, it, it's a new it's it's a new defensive system coming in. And you know, this is absolute manner from heaven for for you know short term not, but long term manner from heaven for Felix Jones because he will be able to show these videos and show these things and go look. If, if you outside had a chase at the same time as he did, then this would have all shut down. We, would, we potentially would have got a, a turnover, but definitely they wouldn't have scored. So short term, massive pain, disappointment for England. But I think long term, I think this team is going to be very, very dangerous in the, in the years to come. Yeah, and we must always remember, I've said it several times on the podcast, but big picture as well. They got a lot of defensive wins from being aggressive. So, you know, the occasional one that they lose off, you know, you have to big, put that into the whole bigger picture in terms of the whole 80 minutes. And I think England actually defended really well for long periods and they caused France a lot of problems. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, uh, listen, if it, that team, uh, that French team could, you know, on a Saturday night in front of that crowd in Lyon could rip you to shreds, you know, and it was the pressure... That England put on, but you, but you know, that will, that's probably what will disappoint both because that they actually scored off of uh, mistakes by England to get the ball in the first place, and that's that's the killer. But I seriously think as as that team develops and and gets you know new people come in, I was about to say get gets rid of the old boys, <laughs> really hard. <laughs> but but as new as new people come in and and adapt to the system over time. You know they they will they 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 will be very very dangerous and 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 uh, learn from this. Yeah, and look, let's be honest. At this stage of the game, it's sixteen three just before half time. France have dominated almost everything really. England haven't really fired a shot in attack, I would say, or minimal anyway. And they somehow actually it was from a good good attacking kick from England that they got a foothold right in the five meter line for some attacking lineouts. And I remember thinking at the time, they have to score. They have to score here before half time. Otherwise, it's going to be so incredibly difficult. The psychological blow of having that mm. foothold and then not make it, taking advantage of it would be probably very difficult to come back from. And what happened? They scored. You're right. And, that, and that's, that's the thing. And, and this is what I mean is it's like, it's, it's, you know, when a new coaching team comes in, it, this is this stuff is just gold. Dust. It's like building platforms. You're creating a narrative. You're creating a story. Do you remember when? Do you remember this thing that worked? This thing. Okay, we didn't. Okay, we now we now we fixed that bit. They know they can do that. Um, and I, I meant so. We've we've done a couple of podcasts today, and and I didn't bring up anything about the under twenties, but like England have got some serious serious players coming through. Serious, like I mean, I watched last night and really great kids coming through. And if they can link into this, that, that what Borthwick is building, they've got a massive result against Ireland. Okay, didn't get it tonight, but but they have building blocks, and it's it's very exciting for the future. If if they can get the backing from what we know is going on here in terms of the domestic game, these guys can go on and do some serious damage. Yeah. So Lawrence did sneak over just on the break and it looked, I mean, it looked so innocuous the way it happened. It was just Slade to Lawrence after a failed maul and it was just a, Johnny Wilkinson picked up at half time, just a late change of direction, took him off of Ficko's line and uh, yeah, just strolled in under the sticks and that gave England hope, I think, and like a real sort of desire. Look, we've been battered yeah. all this first half. We've stood up, we've passed the man test, we've hit them as hard as we can, we're still in this, we've got a score when we had a chance and took that into the second half and just went off like a, a 
bullet out of a gun at the start of the second half with Lawrence getting his second try very soon afterwards. But during that phase of play, there was a pass from Slade to Tommy Freeman, which if Bill Berry hadn't have turned the other way, I'm sure he would have intercepted it. Like the pass must have got got like this close to him, but he'd already turned inside to chase back. Um, it was crazy, really. Yeah, do, do you know, I've seen that a few times, this this championship, where I don't know what's going on with the whatever they're being coached, but I've seen it a few times where they kind of turn to corner flag. Um, uh, I guess maybe it's because a lot of guys are getting done for uh, deliberate knock-ons, and if you don't get it, and you know, just get back and get in. But um, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's, I've, I've seen it a few times this, this championship. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was, a, it was definitely an intercept opportunity if he'd 100%. if he just yeah. stayed square and, and stayed there. But Lawrence scored, and then very shortly afterwards, Genge with some beautiful hands put Earl through the middle of Ramos and Deportier, who we said were going to be flaky defensively, which they were. I mean, they, they were flailing arms, but little else. And then Smith stepping Pano to go in under under the sticks, basically for right. sixteen twenty four, and it was like. Wow, I mean, England really, really showed up uh, at the start of that second half. Yeah, I mean, that was, it, it was so exciting. That it was such a well taken um, try. Smith is is just quite that that handoff as as the winger came onto him. He just or maybe it was like with just pushed him off and and used his momentum to to take him over. And, and the, the 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 bench were there to to celebrate it. And yeah, I was thinking, wow, here we go. This is just what. What a way to to kick off and 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 nick a win in in France! Amazing. Yeah, talking of uh, using weight and momentum, there was a moment when Antonio tackled Smith, and like from the reverse angle, he landed on top of him, and it looked like he just eaten him or something. He just disappeared. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, is he going to be okay? I think he was. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it was – so then we got into a period of the game then where it was kind of – it got into that slightly tense period, um, although France was still really trying to play. The benches had been emptied and all this kind of stuff. So it got a bit scrappy. But then France had this period of play where they just almost switched on and they just went, right, we are going to go hard now. No matter what, we're going to offload. And England banged them back loads of times or hit them. And they just seemed to keep going and keep getting offloads. And eventually Barry scored. And it was just like, wow, that was really intense. Like England really went at them on defence. France really went hard on attack and got the, got, the, got the score. It was quite an impressive period of play. It was, it was great to watch. It was very French. It was kind of one of those, we were having dinner at the time, but watching. And, um, you know, the noise took our attention because each time a pass went off the crowd were lifting and th there's uh, you know I, I i think the french crowds are the best crowds because they just they just get so involved in the game and they're very moody which i love <laughs> but you but but, that, but as it goes they get they get they get more excited and louder and louder and oh, hey, and you could feel there's a try coming if you were outside listening you'd go Something's going to happen, you know, um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was just awesome. Well worked. Um, really, they came at it and, and they just kept getting gain line, and so that that's you know we we spoke about this a few times. Is is when the French want to do something, they can move heaven and earth. They 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 can get gain line. They can get way more than gain line. They just need to want to do it. And um, I suppose playing against the arch enemy at home, um, having had a bit of a crappy tournament um that that that's a, that's a spark for them to 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 crack on it was it was quality yeah and just as england has scored two quick tries at the start of the second half france followed that up with a second one of their own again off a misfunction in england line out this looked like this looked like a missed call to me not an overthrow mm. i think theo dan was throwing to the tail and the england went up in the middle ramos just hacked it like anywhere it was a slice bounced up uh, okay, who's there, of course, Damien Peno. He's always there. It's uh, it's not a mistake, is it, that he's so often found around the ball. He offloaded to Fiku to score. And it was then, you know, the game is flipped on its head. That was mad. That was, um, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a really fatal blow, I think. Um, nice to see Fiku score, uh, being captain of defence. Um, but I think England will be having nightmares and having to review what, what went wrong there, whether it was a missed call or... 
or whatever. You know, as as a hooker, I presume that it was perfect throw, um, and the the lads the lads messed up somehow in the middle, maybe. Um, but yeah, no. Look, listen, a well well taken try and, and a crucial try at that point. Yeah, uh, and now I mean, again, we're talking about swings and flows throughout this game. You know, it's massively France and England had it massively through the uh, period there, and it looked like at this point, to be honest, that France were gonna, you know, they had a squeeze on the yeah. game, they had a grip, and England was struggling to get any kind of ball, certainly territory as well. England really struggling to get any kind of territory. Uh, then there was uh, Ramos stepped up to kick a penalty, which would have taken them two scores clear, less than 10 minutes to go. You think, bang, this is it, all done. And he missed. Like, you never see him miss, really. No, he's he's normally an absolute metronome, isn't he? It's, well, I don't know whether it was just the, the pressure or, you know, he he wanted to take it to the to the, to the last, but it's he very rarely very rarely misses. Maybe it's because he's playing out of position, or whatever. But um, it was an unusual miss for him of a guy of his quality. I'd love to see his stats for the tournament because I'm sure they're down on World Cup. I think they are. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, they are. Now then, the next thing that happened was uh, something else that we picked out pre-game as well, which is. The best opportunity for a jackal is from a chop tackle. And Ben Earl chopped down, can't remember who it was, actually, Colom, maybe, I'm not sure. And Don Brandt in there immediately for the turnover, which gave England field position and then a platform to actually play from. And again, when they had the platform, when they had the opportunity to go through some phases in the right areas, they looked absolutely lethal and uh, ended up with great hands from Ford and Smith to put Freeman over in the corner. And it was game on again, 30-31 at that point with four yeah. hitting a great sort of touchline conversion. Yeah, absolute clutch kick uh, from Fordy. Um, why I think he should still remain a 10, I think he, he can do that for you. Um, and yeah, you know, it all started from, you know, Don Brat's not known as a jackal really. He's known as a, as an attacking an attacking kick, uh, player, but um, he, was, he was excellent, did the job and Creating a massive opportunity, and then yeah, it was it was game on. But fair play to to Fordy. I I think I do think he's. It's almost. I don't. I, I think with a lot of players at the moment, English, Irish, Welsh, whatever, they seem to need to be in peril to play real well, and that goes for all the teams. It seems they need something to be, uh, to 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 get them going. It's a very interesting thing if if we can harness why that is, and I think. We, you know, players will get even better and better. But you know, forty that that kick was, it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a difficult kick. It was, it was obviously, you know, a conversion, um, short distance, slight angle. It wasn't a touchline, but he kicked it true. And as soon as as soon as he kicked, it, he knew he kicked it. He was he was just jogging back and and knew it was over. You know. Yeah. Um, something else we picked up pre game was the scrum which we thought, well, I thought England might struggle with early doors with Genge against Antonio, but that was not the case at all. In fact, I'd say England, whilst not having the edge in the scrum, they probably got the benefit of the decisions because they were more disciplined. Best I've seen Genji scrummage ever. I thought he was absolutely awesome. You could see, um, I was thinking of our combo before, and then I think of the first scrum, it was a, it was literally uh, Antonio against him and Nah, he, he was brilliant. He was able to absorb and then put pressure on and push push him in on angle like Porter did. He was really, really good. And, and I, I guess he's called a 50-50, really. But, you know, a 50-50 in France, uh, bearing in mind what France have done throughout the tournament, that's a win for England all day long. Yeah. Um, and you'd probably actually say that England probably maybe were, were a bit more dominant, but it was a brilliant, brilliant from Genji. Yeah. And we get into the last plays of the game. France around about the halfway line. England banging them backwards. France get the odd little break here or there, but England still keep banging them backwards. And then no arms tackle, which we never got to see a replay of, sadly. Um, I guess no surprise there, really, with the French directors. Uh, I've seen we... it. Have you? <laughs> yeah. I've um, seen it. Uh, by the letter of the law... Yeah, he, so he puts his hand on the floor and hits him. 
Right. But it's really it's so far out from the goal line. I, I mean, it's, you know, normally they give them because they're close to the goal line and, and it's, it, by the letter of law, it is a penalty. By the spirit of the game, I'm not. I'm not convinced that you want to decide a massive game of like that. I think play on a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's not. Da- it's da- it's not dangerous. He's not. It's, it's not. You know, sometimes you see him and you go, "Jesus, that could break someone's leg." But I don't think it is. I think he's he's gone. I think I think he's gone to tackle and then uh, has then put his hand down because right. he got so low. But it, it is it is a no arm tackle, but I don't, it's it's yeah, bleh. and te- bleh. technically, if he's put his hand on the floor, then he's off the uh, he's off his feet as well. So you're then not allowed yeah. to make a tackle either. In any it, case, it, it, yeah. In any case, Ramos steps up with the ball getting slightly further away as the referee gets the position for oh. the TFO. Like, oh my god, it, it yeah. moved, got moved back about another four meters. But of course, that's yeah. still well within Ramos's range and it made no difference he banged it through and uh france saw the game out but i mean just in general for me this was a wild and crazy game with loads of amazing skills real proper physical brutality and for me it had everything and i'm so excited to see england being a part of games like this that i really don't actually care too much that we lost yeah and and this is what we want right As, as a rugby fan you just want you know under the lights for games to be like this, and and you know, I was, the other half is sort of saying, you know, what what does this, what does this game mean? I think you know, as Ireland's already won, I'm like, yeah, but it's two countries going at each other. This, you know, it's like two countries. It's the players, and then it's our us as fans going. We be, you know, and that's what the whole competition is about. That's why it's, I think it's so popular. Um, why I love it so much. It's it's not just about. I mean, Ireland could have won all the games. It doesn't matter. Or England could. Have, it's on the night. You know who wins on that night. Who gets and because it's so physical. You know, I think that's another reason that you know you you want to get one up on your your fellow country to say, "Oi, you know, we, we'll have you," sort of thing. <laughs> but it was it, it was it was a quality game. Um, uh, it it may have made it even more entertaining if Ireland had lost. But then, do you think they would have played the way they did? Probably not. It would have been... England would have, but France probably, you know, it, it, it's slightly different. So, you know, rugby is... It's not like football where you can play for a draw. You just can't do that. You've just got to go out and, and put your body on the line and, and play hard. And that's all we want as fans. 100%. And when, when I think about back to my playing days, like, I remember games like playing in games like that more than all the other games... Even games that I've lost in games like that, I still look back at fondly thinking, wow, that was exhilarating. I had no clue what was going on most of the time, but it was fun. And, you know, that's what it should be like for everybody. I think every person in that stadium and every person watching on TV would have loved that game. And, yeah, that's just what I want to see more of. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Sometimes when you lose, you win. You know what I mean? Because, because you, you create something that... Um, in a playing group that you've gone through and you can claw back on those experiences and memories to say, you know, we've done this and it was awesome and we did these bits of, and then that bit really hurt us, but we know how to fix that. And um, that's that's massive. That's massive. I don't think there's many games in the world where you, where you can draw those things from. I don't think you can in football, truly. I really don't. Um, because it's a physical battle. Um, and particularly, particularly if you're coming up against similar personnel each time, and I think the, this French team and this English team and the Irish team, definitely the Welsh team, um, will, will will be coming up against each other for the next you know decade, and that's brilliant for us as fans because we know that there'll be massive battles between individuals and units and teams, and it's cool. I love rugby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else about the game itself, mate? Any other sort of thoughts, observations uh, before we wrap this one up? No, I, I just think that um, both both sets of fans should be to be you know happy and um, obviously England lost, but but um, I, I I generally think they turned a the corner last week and and Borthwick did as as well as a coach, I think. Um, and um, yeah, um, roll on the the, the summer tours and. Um, Jesus, next year's Six Nations is going to be 
absolutely battle. Big, big battles. Yeah, and it must be said, I, I'm also pleased to see France back to something like their normal self as well. That was give or take an 80-minute performance from them as well. So that was good to see, aside from you know a few defensive errors and, and you know little bits and pieces, but they were back looking more like themselves. I believe they are out for lunch in Lyon this afternoon, a few bottles of wine and a few cigarettes. So, <laughs> joué, joué. <laughs> Joe indeed. Okay, people at home, that's what we think about that game. Are you as excited as we are about the way this England team's playing and the fact that France are back? Um, anything else about the game at all? Anything sort of tactical or technical that we missed that you think was really important? Any players that you thought had great games that we missed out on? Any, any players that you thought maybe disappointed? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up. While you're down there, if you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And for the last time, this Six Nations, Elko, it leaves me to say thank you so much for your time today and for throughout the tournament. Thanks, CT. Thoroughly enjoyed us. Thoroughly enjoyed all the all the lovely comments. And um, yeah, here's to uh, Six Nations 2025. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.